for the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. In Jesus' name, dearly beloved. Notice the disdainful terms St. Paul uses for the law. The letter, the ministry of death carved in letters on stone, the ministry of condemnation. Notice also the disgraceful conclusion St. Paul has for the law. No glory at all was being brought to an end. No wonder St. Paul was condemned as a heretic by his peers, not hearing God and certainly not speaking at all for God. No wonder Jesus, who taught St. Paul such language, was condemned the same way by his so-called peers. No wonder the hearing and speaking of Luther and you and me and anyone else who echoes such faith, such language, is condemned by their peers as heretics because the law and its works is the only righteousness this world will ever praise and reward. How dare you say the commandment, you shall have no other gods, kills. We preach a much more popular, way more optimistic view of the law. We say this commandment and others like it is the ministry of the Spirit. How dare you say the preacher that commands people to love the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit with all we have and are is the ministry of death carved in letters on stone. We say it's the ministry of life. How dare you say the commandment to love your neighbor as yourself is the ministry of condemnation. Everyone knows, the world knows, and we know it too. That commandment, and others just like it, is the ministry of righteousness. Well, that's what the goats in the parable of the sheep and the goats believed. Or when were you hungry or thirsty or naked or sick and in prison? We did not minister to you. Hmm? How'd that work out for them? The law and its works, no matter how they glitter and shine in the eyes of this world, in the end, do not, will not, cannot declare anyone righteous in God's sight, not now and certainly not on the last day. Only Jesus and his works can do that. It's not that the law is evil. It's actually you and I who are evil. Jesus even says, if you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more your Father in heaven no wonder the world hates this Jesus. What next? Is he going to call even our righteous deeds, filthy rags, in the eyes of his father? Yes, he is. Again, it's not the law's fault for any of that. The law, as St. Paul writes in Romans 7, is holy and just and good. No one here is saying otherwise. Have no other gods but the one who has revealed himself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. What greater good work can you and I possibly be about today or any other day? But hear this too. That commandment and every other one just like it was not written to show sinners what we can do to be righteous in God's sight. It was written to show us what we don't do, won't do, can't do. It was written to show us we are sinners that every one of us have had, do have, and will have other gods in our hearts and in our lives. Then who can be saved? Those whom God now has. That's who. It's not that you climb up to God, but that God climbs down to you. It's not that you keep the first commandment and have no other gods. It's that God keeps you now. The breaker of this commandment and every other one just like it keeps you now as his. Does he? Jesus' death for all your sins upon the cross is all you bet he does. Your baptism into his death and resurrection for you says, oh, you bet he does 24-7 now. Today's absolution and sermon say, yes, God has you now, now and forever, and soon again the body and the blood will promise it all over again for you, for the forgiveness of sins. God has you now. Give Jesus your heart. Invite him in. 
Do such good works as the first table of the law commands you. Just don't rub God's face with such sins, such filthy rags. Does Jesus give you his heart? Does he invite you, the sinner, in? His death for you upon the cross, his word, his water, his supper, all promise you yes. Yes, he has, yes, he does, and yes, he always will. There is your righteousness with God. There is your life with God, your salvation, not you, Jesus, not the law and its works, the gospel and its promises. Love your neighbor as yourself. Feed, clothe, give drink to visit those in need. Holy and just are the commandments to do so. But you know what else they are? At the risk of being branded a heretic. The preaching and teaching of the law as our righteousness now with God. Even the second table involving our neighbor is not the ministry of the spirit but the letter. Is not the ministry of life but death. Is not the ministry of righteousness, but condemnation. And that's not what God sent Jesus for. And so you can rest assured, it is not what God has sent his church for either. He sends his church here for you. In other words, God sends his church for the true ministry of the Spirit which is the preaching and teaching of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and Him crucified. Crucified for sinners, for the havers of other gods like you and me, like all men. God found His idolater, His haver of other gods, His great unbeliever, when He found Jesus on the cross for you and me. Because Jesus became you and me, became every truth about you and me when He hung on the cross for you and me. And now... By his death for you upon the cross, God sees you not as a sinner anymore, not as a haver of other gods anymore. He sees you as a great believer now, holy and righteous in his sight in every way, having no other gods but him alone. That's the ministry of the Spirit. Here's what God sends his church for. The ministry of life, which is the gospel, which is the baptizing of those dead in trespasses and sins, baptizing them into Jesus' death and resurrection for them, washing sin and death off of them. Every day, clothing you and me now in Christ. Here's why God sends his church. For the true ministry of righteousness, which is the forgiveness of sins, which is the righteousness promised you in me in the Holy Supper. Take, eat, this is my body. Take, drink, this is my blood. Given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. That's why God sends his church, because the forgiveness of sins is the only righteousness God recognizes in this life. The only righteousness he himself will ever praise or reward in this life. Not our works, but the works his son does for you and me. Not the law, the gospel. And here's the great ephatha from God for you and me today. The gospel, which God himself calls the ministry of righteousness, the ministry of life, and the ministry of the spirit, is in fact forever. Not the ministry of the law, but the ministry of the gospel. Soak that in. Take that to heart. The gospel is not some stopgap measure designed by God to get you back on track towards saving yourself. As if in the end only the law and its works can save you. As if all God was saying to you by the gospel is, I sure hope this helps. Good heavens, no. Jesus didn't die on the cross for people who are or might someday be righteous and holy because of their own lives. He died on the cross for people who are not and will never be holy and righteous because of their own lives. He didn't sacrifice everything wrong about him on the cross for everything right about you, just the opposite. On the cross, Jesus sacrificed everything right about him. For every last thing wrong about you. And here's your confidence with God now. Your trust. Your salvation. This gospel is forever. It's not some stopgap measure to get you back under the law so you can save yourself. It's your rescue from what was carved in letters on stone. It's your rescue from the law and from you. 
It's your rescue from the law with the gospel because the forgiveness, God speaks over you in the gospel. The life he washes onto you in your baptism, the righteousness he feeds you with at his holy supper does not come to you with a shelf life. It is permanent, it holds, it lasts, it's forever. And so it will also forever save you from you. In fact, God himself wants you to know this gospel so outshines and so outlasts the law in his sight. It can bring, it brings his own law to an end, making his own law in his own eyes have no glory at all. Only him, only Jesus, only the gospel for you and for me. And they, like us in our day, were astonished beyond all measure, saying, he's done all things well. He makes even the deaf hear and the mute speak. In Jesus' name, amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus.